So if you happen to be a fan of Roki Suzaki, the Japanese pitcher, you're probably going to like this. What's going on, everybody? So the Yankees came back and won last night 2-1. to one. Great pitching. Alex Verdugo, clutch, clutch hitting. You know, Luis Hill, eight, eight innings. Great pitching. Clay Holmes shut him down on a 9-2. So 2-1 to one victory to tie the series at one. They played game three tonight. I'll have the lineup later. But I want to talk about Roki Suzaki. And, again, I say this repeatedly. I'm not one that's going to be joining the hype train right now because the fact is he hasn't asked to be posted yet which he likely will, but they haven't posted him yet, his team. And he's a Japanese pitcher who needs to be posted officially to be available. And since he's not of eligible age, 25 years per age, he's 22 right now, um, it's, it's going to be a little bit different. He's going to be subject to the same uh, status as, as Shohei Otani was when he came here, meaning three years of pre-ARB, three years of ARB. So you, and again, so benefit to the team, okay, but also means – his team is likely going to be would be walking away from forty fifty million dollars in posting fees, which is it's not something they're going to you know that's not something they're just going to easily do. So, but with that said, um, there is talk that he's going to ask to be posted again. We'll see what happens. But and there are teams that could use him. You know, uh, the Cubs can use an extra pitcher to complement Shota Minaga. You know, the Dodgers are going to be in the running, and they've got money to spend. Okay, and it's all. A lot of speculation that, you know, and anybody from Japan is just going to go to Dodgers. And since they got Otani and, Sh and Yoshinobu Yamamoto, right? So, but there are other teams who could be sneaky good fits for this guy too. The Braves. Yeah, crazy the Braves, right? But, um, and other teams. But what's most encouraging is this. I'm going to share an article. Okay. Here we go. The Yankees have early plans to chase another Japanese superstar pitcher in 2025. If you're a Yankee fan, you're going to be excited. New York Yankees missed out on star pitcher Yoshinobu Yamamoto to Los Angeles Dodgers in the winter of 2024, but will be even more aggressive in their pursuit of a Japanese flamethrower next season. This is Roki Sasaki. I will attach this video down below, I mean this article, so you can read it yourself. It says MLB trade rumors Nick Days had this to say about the Yankees' plans to go after righty Roki Sasaki. OK. After all, teams would enjoy a much more in financial playing field in bidding for his services this winter than one would typically would associate with a free agent of his caliber. Thanks to the aforementioned spending restrictions regarding players close to the age of 25. The Dodgers are joined by the Yankees, Mets, Cardinals, Rangers, among teams that have reportedly already begun to scout MPV stars this season. So they're on preemptively scouting this guy and getting him uh, ready to be ready to pursue. So, and again, you know, as it pertains to the Yankees, they missed out on one guy. I don't think they're going to miss out on another guy. So I think they're going to be a little bit more, <clears throat> um, what do you call it? They're going to be much more aggressive. And the fact is, if the spending restrictions apply, they're not going to have to pay 320 plus million that they, you know, the 300 million that they offered for Yoshinobu Yamamoto. He was of eligible age. Sazaki is not. So it alters the posting system. It alters how he's pursued. It alters how he's paid. So that's something to keep in mind. In eight games played in MPB 2024, he has a 4-2 and two record with a pristine 218 ERA, 61 Ks. Through his four professional seasons in Japan, a 22-year-old has shown strong command on the ground, on the mound with a show-worthy 0.856 whip and is projected to have superstar potential in the major leagues. Now, I don't know what your thoughts are, gang, but this is something. And I, again, I'm going to attach this down below so you can read the whole thing yourself. Okay. But, and make sure if you're not subbed to this channel, I don't want you to miss it. Subscribe to this channel. Okay. And hit the notification button because I will go live. We'll talk about this too. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, want you, I, I want you to be up front of the line when news does come in whatever it is, especially Yankees, okay? And hit the notification button too if you do that. And that makes sure you're at the front of the line and you get everything. You know exactly when we go live too. And I thank you for your support. We're knocking on the door 21,000 subs. Your, your support means the world, okay? And if you enjoy the content, hit the like button too, please. But the Yankees are going to be in the front of this line too. And again, they did miss out. 
Okay, they did miss out on in Yamamoto. They have a boatload of money coming off the books that they did not have last offseason when they pursued Yamamoto. So the financial structure is going to be completely different. Yes, they've got to re-sign Juan Soto, 100%. Okay, but this could also mean the Yankees will likely put a pitcher on the trade block at the deadline with the expectation they're going to be pursuing somebody like Roki Sasaki too. Because Garrett Cole will come back, the rotation is still going to be clogged. Okay, but if you can get a guy like Roki Sasaki here, and again, I'll say the same thing with Yamamoto. He's project, he was projected to be the next, next best thing. He's good, Yamamoto. He's not the savior. And, I, and I'm not levying that expectation on Roki Sasaki either. I don't care that he throws 102, 103. There's dozens of guys in majors that do that already. That doesn't make any different. So he's got to adjust here to major leagues, just like Yamamoto's doing, just like Shota Minaga's doing, just like Masahiro Tanaka had to do, and all these other guys, Kodai Senga. But am I excited about his potential? Sure. But I'll wait until he's actually posted. But I figured this would be something to excite the Yankee fans who happen to also be Roki Sazaki fans. Okay? And because I know it's going to excite a lot of people. And that's cool. That's good. And if you, what your thoughts are, could you see the Yankees adding this guy to the rotation? You know, and who, what, I mean, we talked about this recently, but now with this in mind now, with Roki Sasaki potentially becoming available, okay, um, who would you move on from in the rotation to make room for him? Because you'd have, you likely have to do that. Okay. We've got Nestor Cortez has one year left after this year. Clark Schmidt's got three. Hill has six. <laughs> so Cortez has four. I'm not Cortez, excuse me. Rodon's got four. Stroman's got two. And Cole has another four or five years too. So the most likely candidate to be moved is Nestor Cortez. Much I like him, but he's got one year left. And if you can replace him with someone on the cheap of this caliber, you might want to think about doing that. Which is why I proposed trades recently with Nestor Cortez in them. Okay, he could extract some decent value for the Yankees, you know, and he's a good pitcher. And I'm not, that's not to say I don't like him. I do like him. But any chance you have an opportunity to replace a pitcher with somebody of this potential, this potential, you know, caliber, you need to consider doing it, especially if you can do it on the cheap, which they would be doing. Okay. I believe the team would take full advantage of pre arb years. Arbitrations when things get, get, can get expensive. Not really pre-arb. So, and he would be subject to six years. And again, instead of a immediate posting saying, like, if, if he had waited until he's 25, the window would be three years, okay? But he would be subject to the full contract immediately, like Yamamoto. He'd be making major league money immediately, okay? Different story. Okay, if, he's, if, he does the, if he goes the Otani route, he has to wait for those six years to happen for him to be eligible for the big money. and. Yankees of all teams would be a team that would probably want to do that. So, and the, again, also you could see if he's going to pan out or not. If he doesn't pan out, you could walk away from him. And you didn't spend the ball load of money. You could walk away from him. He'd be 28 and somebody else can take advantage of it. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, the juice could be worth the squeeze here. But again, you know, I'm not going to call this filet mignon yet. I'm not going to call it rump roast either. But, you know, that's the key. Okay, and that's at least in my opinion. Let me know what your opinions are. Your, your opinion could, could be widely different than mine, which is totally cool. Okay, all opinions are welcome. But Roki Sasaki, it looks like the Yankees are going to be in on him aggressively. And they said here, more aggressively than they were. And they pursued Yamamoto for a whole year. They had a, they had somebody at his games every single game he was outing. Every single game he pitched in Japan, he Yankees had a representative there. Every freaking week they had somebody to fly to Japan. Okay, so what kind of courtship are they going to be levying upon Roki Sasaki? I have no idea, but he's got a big arm. The Yankees like big arms. So give me your thoughts, gang. Okay, let's talk about this. I'll see you all later on with the lineup tonight against the Angels. Time for the Yankees to win the series, right? And then they go off and they play the San Francisco Giants after this. Hopefully they win that series too. So let's go, Yankees. Have a good day, gang. Peace.